Hello, I'm Ken Burrell from Pragmatic PMO and this is Scary Scars Shared. In these interviews, I ask real project managers to share in around 10 minutes what they have learned from their most challenging project management experiences. If you're new here, you might want to consider subscribing to the video channel or the podcast. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Richard Humphrey, who's going to share some of his experiences with us. This is the first of these videos that I've done under COVID-19 lockdown conditions, so I'm pretty sure you'll be able to excuse the dodgy backgrounds and I hope you'll be able to excuse my dodgy beard. Richard, I'd like to start with you introducing yourself and giving us a flavour of your background and how you got into project management. Hi Ken. Yeah, so I've, I've worked in, in business change probably around 20 years now. I've held leadership roles at a number of blue chip generally financial services companies around the, the city across insurance, investment banking, retail banking sectors. Uh, also managed to spend some time working down in South Africa and I've been pretty lucky to, to work with colleagues pretty much all over the globe. So it's been a, been a great experience doing that. Main expertise really in focus of recent years has been around portfolio management, PMO management. Although in the past I've done um, many roles on projects, you know, from analyst through to delivery manager on a pretty diverse set of projects, starting really with the original Euro implementation, which dates me rather, uh, Y2K through infrastructure build, office relocations, software, even PPM tool implementations. And it was taking the learnings from the original Y2K program that really first got me into the PMO world. You know, I've kind of really enjoyed that mix of activities and, and, and the interactions that it affords you over the years. So, you know, that's really why I've, I've stayed in that particular line. So thinking back over what sounds like quite a, an extensive and varied project management career, can you think of uh, an example of a scar? So something that went wrong on a project that you were delivering and um, what you learned from it? Yeah, so one of my roles, I'd, I'd started um, as a portfolio lead just slightly after the planning round had commenced. Annual portfolio planning at that point. It was in quite a diverse business. It was broad and relatively flat. So lots of product lines and operational teams that made quite a sizable input. And then the business were really taking a shopping list approach. So they were articulating any potential project that they might wish uh, to, to execute over the following year without necessarily directly linking that back to how that may benefit their particular business. It will be something that would make things better, but it wouldn't necessarily be measurably beneficial nor directly aligned to the strategic progress that the company was likely to make. So it was just sort of like saying, that sounds like a good idea, let's do it. Yeah, so that, that led to a really quite lengthy governance review process. The first review that I went into was, was a three hour meeting where we talked in great length about the first projects on the list. And as energy waned in the room, yeah. <laughs> projects later on either were dismissed out of hand or you know were approved without the sense of rigor that some of the earlier ones had been. I saw there was a number of opportunities to change the process um, overall, but the key one was really trying to find a way that would increase business ownership, the accountability of the business people, and provide them with a level of filtering and prioritization at a business unit level. So one of the uh, suggestions that I had was formalizing a sub portfolio board for each of the key business units, which would provide that level of oversight and control, sorting out local problems within the business units portfolio. So with the nice little pyramid of, of control um, and adding that additional layer that I think was missing because we were going from project to you know, executive subcommittee without too much in the way of escalation. I think the solution that put in place was it was pretty lean. You know, it was tailored to the the organizational structure, the organizational maturity. You know, I'd spent all the time that I should have done. I socialized the proposal with my peers amongst the transformation leadership team and some of the key business change heads. I went through my thoughts with some external consultants that had been engaged by the company on a, on a group target operating model. So, you know, decent validation. Of, of the thinking. The proposal was to go through this with my boss, who is the, the current you know, CIO and, and head of operations and an overall owner of that change portfolio. So I prepared well for my presentation. I met with my boss accompanied by you know one of my peer group who was very supportive of the changes that I was looking to make. And you know I thought I communicated the proposals pretty well, but uh, they were completely dismissed out of hand. And that came as a complete surprise to me at the time. 
What I later found out was that the existing structure had been put in place by my, my boss and I was essentially trying to unpick something that they'd put in place specifically. And what I wasn't aware of at all was some tension that was brewing at the executive level where a land grab for budget had been started between some of the other operational heads. Right. And the suggestion that I was putting forward could be perceived as diminishing the, the power base and or influence of the person I was proposing it to. Yep. And that proved to be the failing at that particular juncture. The key failure really was a lack of understanding of the evolution of the process but also the internal politics unique to an organization before pitching what I thought was a perfectly you know, sensible suggestion for change at that time. You know, not understanding who'd put the previous framework in place, why they'd done that, and also, you know, that suggested potential dilution of influence. Uh, that was a, a far greater issue to them than the weakness in the portfolio process at that point. Just to recap then, you've got a situation where um, the annual portfolio prioritisation and planning process isn't working as smoothly and efficiently as you think it could. So you're suggesting a modification to that process, uh, which you socialised, got good feedback on and all that kind of stuff. But when it came to the point of presenting your proposal, it got dismissed because of um, organisational politics of which you'd been unaware up to that point. Have I captured that correctly? Yeah, essentially. Right. Having got to that point, what did you do? I went away and I found out why the underlying problems existed. So I had to approach that then in a different way, building with the business unit leads their own influence over their own portfolios. So naturally, the sub portfolio groups started to take shape. And whilst we, we never actually moved budget from the CIO area, the sub portfolio groups were um, put in and working extremely effectively. Ultimately, the, the proposal proved to be successful, just had to do it a slightly different way, rather than saying, you know, here's a new structure that I feel that we should implement because it was almost more of a, a, of a stealth. It was a realization within the business that this was useful and then a realization within the, the overall portfolio governance that ensuring that business have got ownership, accountability and control of their own destiny is actually a good thing. Yeah. Uh, and not something that should be discouraged. It was very much a minimum viable product in a way because it started as an informal discussion with, with several people around the, 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 the individual business area. Then we tacked you know, a session into their existing leadership teams and then it became slightly more formalized and then the outputs from those led directly into the the main change portfolio so it, it it did grow from a smaller seed in an incremental way but building that that same proposal in a in an incremental way did ultimately um, become an effective uh, structure for the organization yes so it sounds like um in 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 moving from um trying to just plant a mature tree uh to growing that same tree from seed although it took a bit longer um the oh how far can i take this analogy the roots were more stable as That's a result a great analogy <laughs> Looking back over that experience, um, what would you recommend to others that they should do um, if they find themselves in a situation like you did, or even better, to avoid arriving at that situation in the first place? To look at each of those levers, don't just think of the obvious. You know, this has been a very, it was a very positive experience for me in that it, it has given me a far more rounded approach at, you know, a senior directoral level better understanding of how what you're doing uh, fits in with what else is going on in, in, in the in the Absolutely. Exact world. Yeah, yeah. So taking account of, of other people's, both their opinion, but also their environment and the influences on them before making a proposal that also impacts their environment. It's an appreciation of, of those external factors that are running, you know, outside of your normal channel of, of view. Richard, thanks for your time, your openness and your insights. So today we've heard from Richard about how he recovered from a challenging situation and what he learned from it. My challenge to you is what can you learn from this? What will you do differently in your projects as a result of Richard's experience? Let me know in the comments. 
If you enjoyed this interview, let me know by leaving a comment or a like or both, or by sharing it with others on social media. If enough people think these interviews are worthwhile, I'll make more of them. If you want to share your scars in one, let me know. If you're new here, you might want to consider subscribing to the video channel or the podcast. For other videos on project management topics, take a look at my video channel. For articles on project management and PMO topics, take a look at my website pragmaticpmo.com or follow me on Twitter at pragmaticpmo. To connect with me more personally, search LinkedIn for Ken Burrell Pragmatic PMO. In the meantime, until the next time, thanks for listening. <laughs>